On the 27th September 1983, the American software developer and professor at MIT, Richard Stallman, announced to the world the GNU project. Since the term open source was not coined until 15 years later by somebody else, this was referred to as a free software project, whereby the word free here pertained not to money so much as to a basic set of freedom rights that were enshrined in GNU's general public license. These are listed on GNU's website as, quote, the freedom to run the program, to study and change the program in source code form, to redistribute exact copies and to distribute modified versions. The name of the project itself, GNU, is a recursive acronym, an acronym which refers to itself, which here simply stands for GNU's not Unix. The reason Stallman felt compelled to initiate a piece of software that was not Unix, but that said so in its own name, was that Unix was considered to have potential as a universal operating system owing to its modularity, adaptability and portability. Unix and the thinking behind its programming greatly chimed with Stallman. What jarred with him was that it was proprietary. He felt strongly that computer software, quote, differs from material objects such as chairs, sandwiches and gasoline in that it can be copied and changed much more easily. These facilities are why software is useful. We believe a program's users should be free to take advantage of them, not solely its developer. End of quote. In this spirit, Stallman set out to create an operating system that was as good as Unix, as adaptable, as modular, as elegant and as robust, but that did not belong to anyone, not even himself. One that was just like Unix, but not Unix. It was GNU. The fact that GNU is known the world over mostly as Linux is down mostly to a Finn named Linus Torvalds. Linus Torvalds was born in 1969 to Niels and Anna Torvalds, both journalists who had formed part of the politically engaged student body at Helsinki University during their studies there in the 1960s. In fact, Niels Torvalds, who around the time of his son's birth, joined the Finnish Communist Party for a while, today is a member of the European Parliament for the Swedish People's Party of Finland, which belongs to the Alliance of Liberals and Democrats for Europe. Linus started his studies at the same university as his parents in 1988, taking a nearly year-long break in 1990 to do his military service and then continued until graduating with a Master's in Computer Science in 1996. In 1991, soon after returning to his studies and now aged 21, Linus became interested in operating systems, having come across Unix. And at a time when most people didn't know what an operating system was, he went straight for the jugular and, for his own use, developed a kernel for Minix, which was a Unix-like operating system that was made freely available for academic use by the computer scientist Andrew S. Tannenbaum. The kernel, as most people who are not software developers themselves still don't know today, is the core of an operating system and thus the thing that controls everything else. Linus wanted to call his work Freaks, as in a free and a bit freak and maybe street version of Unix. And it happened to be a volunteer system administrator for the university's FTP server, a man called Ari Lemke, who didn't like the name Freaks and unilaterally decided to call the project Linux on the server instead. The name stuck and Linus Torvalds did not object. In fact, he even recorded a short pronunciation guide for Linux users to be included with the source code. Who did object 
when the name started to cling not only to Linus's own kernel project on a university server in Finland, but to the operating system he himself had started several years earlier back in the United States, was Gnu's Richard Stallman. Because the kernel young Linus had made proved so useful and usable that the free software community working on GNU rapidly, readily adopted it as theirs and built it into the GNU operating system, replacing the original and thus putting in place the final and by some margin most crucial piece of a complex jigsaw to actually provide a working and genuinely free Unix-like operating system. The Free Software Foundation founded by Richard Stallman to propagate software such as GNU, therefore calls the operating system GNU Linux, arguing that Linux is only one, even though an important part, of what makes the software tick, while everybody else, recognizing a good name when they see one, calls it Linux. Today, Linux is the most stable operating system in the world, and also the most prevalent. It's spectacularly successful in all kinds of hardware, from NASA supercomputers to notebooks, but its great distribution is due to the mobile handsets market, where, as the kernel of Android, it is the core of the most widely used operating system in the world too. And it is still open source. Linus Torvalds, meanwhile, now into his 50s, has won many awards for his work. He is married with three daughters, he has acquired US citizenship and, unlike his father, steers well clear of party politics. He owns and controls the Linux trademark and is sponsored by the not-for-profit Linux Foundation, continuing to contribute to the development of Linux. Tim Berners-Lee famously said that he invented the World Wide Web because he needed it. The same, in a way, could be set for Linus Torvalds and Linux. When he needed a good kernel for Minix and the source code wasn't available, he just wrote one himself. Once he'd done so, he announced his project in the relevant Minix news group at the time. And considering this is a unit about collaboration, it seems particularly apt to quote here some of that post. Hello everybody out there using Minix. I'm doing a free operating system, just a hobby, won't be big and professional like GNU. This has been brewing since April and is starting to get ready. I'd like any feedback on things people like or dislike in Minix, as my OS resembles it somewhat. Things seem to work. This implies that I'll get something practical within a few months, and I'd like to know what features most people would want. Any suggestions are welcome but I won't promise I'll implement them. Smiley face, signed, Linus.